All right, welcome back to Discrete Math 2. Our first topic is the Catalan numbers, and this is an interesting question. I bring it up not because it's super important, but because it's a little bit more challenging to understand why this works, and it's a good way to get your mindset in to Discrete Math 2, because there's a lot of tricky things that we have to cover, and not, of it, not all of it's straightforward, so it's good to get some ideas around here. So, here's the question. How many paths are there from 0, 0 to NN without crossing the diagonal? Of course, this is going only north or east. So, it's a difficult problem, because you think, hold on a second. I just need to count the amount of ways that I can get north and east and north and east without ever crossing the diagonal. So that's difficult. So you think, well, it's probably half the amount of ways from 0 to nn, just just half of that. So that's what you're thinking. Okay, that works, maybe. But it's not going to. So here's what we need to do. Instead of taking half of the amount of paths there, what we do is we take the total amount of paths, and then we subtract everything above the diagonal. So you're thinking, hold on a second, now how do I do that? Well, first of all, let's figure out our total paths. The total number of ways you can get from 0, 0 to nn is going to be, well, there's n ways east, n ways up, so that's going to be 2n factorial. I should put this in brackets so I get this right. It's 2n factorial over, well, there's n ways to go east, and there's n ways to go north. So that's the total amount. Now what about above the diagonal? What about this area right here? So I'm going to do something tricky here. What we're going to do is, well, first let's look at some of the paths we can take. We can go east, north, east, north, east, east, north, north. So let's just write out what we have so far. We have E, N, E, N, E, E, N, N. So what do we see here that's interesting? Well, let's try a path that doesn't work. Let's try going north, north, east, north, east, east. Okay, so we have north, north, east, north, east, east. And what's interesting is that with the paths that work, there's always going to be at least as many E's as there are N's. So we have an East East, we have an NN, but in the first, or in the second path we have, we have more North than East at any given time, or at some given time. So it doesn't work. So at all given times we have to have more North than East, or more East than Norths. We need to have more East than North at all given times to make the path work. So, here's a tricky thing that some brilliant man thought of. What if we take a path? So let's take a path that sort of works. Let's go east a bunch, north a bunch, east, north, east, and then we're going to hit the diagonal at this point. And we're going to continue the path. So let's just keep going north, north, east, north, north and go all the way over to NN there. What we're going to do is we're going to take the point that just went past the line there. And we're going to make a mirror image of that point. So instead of going north at a step, we go east. Instead of going east, we go north. So we went so instead of going northeast there, we went east-north. The next two paths are north-north. So we're going to go east-east. And then the next three are going to be north-north-north. And we're going to end up at this point n minus 1, n plus 1. So we end up there on that path. Okay, let's, let's do another example of path in there. Let's do it in turquoise. So let's cross early this time. And we need to get all the way over there. So the first place we passed was 
at this point right here. So then instead of going east, we go north. And then instead of going three north, we go three east. Instead of going two east, we go two north. Instead of going one, two, three, four north, we're gonna go one, two, three, four east. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six east on the original path. So we're gonna go six up on the north path. And then instead of going north, we go east. So we end up at the same spot. And what's interesting is that no matter where we do this, we're always going to end up at the same spot. So how many paths are above the diagonal? Well, above, this is equal to the same number of paths from 0, 0 to n minus 1, n plus 1. So this is going to be, well, what is n minus 1 plus n plus 1? That's 2n factorial, or 2n, so that's the total amount of moves we did. And this is going to be divided by n plus 1 factorial times n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so let's simplify these a little bit. 2n factorial over n factorial is the same thing as 2n choose n. And 2n factorial over n plus 1 factorial times n minus 1 factorial is just 2n times n, or 2n choose n plus 1. So the nth Catalan number is equal to, we'll call this cn, is equal to 2n choose n minus 2n choose n plus 1. And you can do some algebra, and you can shorten this to 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n. And that's the amount of paths there are from 0, 0 to nn, where there's always as many easts as norths. Kind of a tricky concept, kind of a tricky proof. Uh, there's a lot of steps involved in simplifying this to this equation, so try it if you can, and that's awesome if you can prove it to yourself that it works, but it's not super easy to do, so if your algebra skills aren't quite there, don't feel bad. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing. We took a problem that seemed very difficult, and we did some really cool path shifting, and we were able to solve it. So, what can we do with this information? Well, this is really similar. It's, it's, it's interesting that this is very similar to the amount of ways that you can parenthesize a product. So if we have a times b times c times d times e times f, well, we can multiply two numbers together by doing a, b, and then we have brackets around them. So we have a bracket, we have one object, we have another object, and we have a bracket. So this is similar to that way. Now, I'm going to show you an example of how this relates to Catalan numbers. So we have a few steps that we have to do to take something that has already been done as a parenthesized product. So we have a fully parenthesized product here. It's parenthesized properly. So here's what we do. We're going to delete all of the right brackets. So now we're going to get left A, left B, left C, left left D, E, and then we have F. And our second step we're going to do is delete the last product. So in this case, we want to delete that f. Okay, so we're going to have a times b times c times or times d times e. Now, here is the interesting thing here. What we're going to do is we're going to change all the left brackets to E's, and all of the letters, which we'll just call XI, to N's. So this becomes E, N, E, N, E, N, E, E, 
n n. What is this? Well, this is, so let's see how, how many letters are there. There's two, four, six, eight, ten letters. So this means that n is equal to five. This is the same as going from zero, zero to five, five, not above the diagonal. Because remember, there's always just as many east as norths in this sequence. So this is equal to the fifth Catalan number, which is equal to 10, choose 5, times 1 over 5 plus 1, which is 6. And that's how many ways there are to parenthesize this product. Now we did an example here, and you're wondering, hold on a second, why does one specific example give you the general equation? Well, it didn't. This is one specific path. But if we have a specific path, we know how many steps there are. We know that there's five easts and there's five norths, so there should be ten total steps to take, and this is just the solution. Now, there's another couple questions you're going to have. One, why are we deleting the right brackets, and why are we deleting the last product? That could be kind of confusing of why it works. So, what I'm going to do is instead of answering that question, I'm going to bypass it a little bit, and I'm going to go backwards. And you'll understand why we have to do this, hopefully, and why it's not always super easy to do. So, all of our Easts are going to become left brackets, and I'm going to space these out quite a bit, because we don't know where the right brackets are. So I, they don't need to be this spaced out. We have left, 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 N, our first north will be A, and we have a left, and we have a B, a C, a left, a D, and E, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five left brackets and five letters, but there's always going to be one more letter than left brackets because of the way that multiplying products works. So we have to add in the F here. In fact, I'm going to do this in pink. So that's the letter we added. And now what we have to do is we have to add in our right brackets. So this might take trial and error to make sure you get the brackets in the right places. So if we take a look at our last left bracket, it can only contain two objects inside. So it has to be after this D and this E right here. So this is going to, in fact, to make sure that this is all working, I'm going to put some lines underneath all of our letters. And what's going to happen is when I put a bracket around them, I'm going to connect them like this. And it's only going to connect to two letters. So Okay, we should probably put in another bracket. If we have another left bracket beside the B, we should probably put this one here. Okay, so this works. Now we have another left bracket with an A. So this A is going to connect to something. So it's probably going to connect to this BC here. So we'll put another bracket here. And now we have a left bracket on this, or this left bracket here. So it's going to take this ABC product and connect it with something. So this will be DE. So these two have to be put together. So we're going to put in a bracket right after here. And then of course this F has to be connected to something. So we'll put a final bracket here. Now the process may seem a little bit confusing. So I'm going to erase these things and we'll talk through it. We needed to pair this left bracket up with a right bracket. So we had to take the first two things after the left bracket. Same with this one. There were only two things after that left bracket, so we had to pair the B and the C together. We have a left bracket here, which its first argument is going to be an A, and then it has to pair with the next thing. So that was this BC there. This next bracket is going to take 
this full argument, the ABC, and it has to combine it with the next argument, which is going to be DE, so we put a bracket there, then our last one has to encompass the whole thing. So all the brackets line up, there's always two things between each bracket, so we're okay. So that is how we take a path and we turn it into a parenthesized product. And you can also take the product and turn it into a path. That's pretty much the only application that I would ask of you and your prof would probably ask you to do on an exam if they cover this material. I'm trying to think of other ones. I don't think there's any good ones that are super intuitive or would be able to be figured out on your own. If something else was taught in your class, a different example, definitely learn it because that would be asked. But uh, these are the major things, at least in the books that I've looked at. So that is the Catalan numbers. A little bit tricky, a little bit of a tricky proof. This is a very mechanical procedure. Um, the, the big math part is really in the proof of it. And that's about it. So next time we will finish our counting stuff and we'll start moving into some probability because that's where the meat of the course starts. So as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, uh, share this with your friends, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Be awesome. And if you want to check out more stuff, you can go to the website at trevtutor dot com we have or i have exams and other courses on there too so you can check it out thanks for watching